Hello, fun! My name is Nick, and I'm here at the Midwest Regional in Chicago with Team 3061 Husky Robotics. They're off to a great start this season, serving as the winning captains at the Heartland Regional. They have a compact robot that works incredibly well, all of it packaged night neatly to run quickly on the field. Plenty of more information about this coming up in Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Now we're heading over to Franklin to talk about their intake system. So on our robot this year, we have a compact under the bumper intake, as you can see here. We've got two rollers that allow us to easily intake notes underneath our bumper. It then gets lifted up over this ramp into handoff into the kicker. It is very compact, driven by a Falcon hidden in there, a pulley to the first shaft, and then we've got some hidden gears back in this side to power the second roller. Okay, let's demonstrate in taking a note. Yep, so you can see it intakes very quickly and smoothly. One other thing I wanted to point out is that at the start of our season, we originally had the idea of having a robot with two intakes that would then transition together into the shooter. However, about like week seven of build season, we realized that just wasn't feasible. So we rotated the shooter and rearranged the entire robot to get to where we are now with one straight path of the note all the way from the intake to the shooter. Absolutely. Very cool. Now we're headed over to Lodum to talk about their shooter system. Yeah, so um, this year we try to make the shooter as simple as possible. We have two kicker wheels. These two kickers uh, keep the note into the fly wheels we'll, we'll get through later. Um, one of them is, has full, full length on top and bottom. One of them has these three on either side, just so that we have minimal contact between the kicker and the, when the note goes through the fly wheel. On the sides and on the bottom, there's some PTFP film that we have. Um, the shooter is pivoted by this Falcon over here. It's a 180 to one total using a can coder to read absolute angle. Uh, this is using a gear and we pivot using a max uh, rev, like dead axle system. Um, transitioning over to our flywheel system, we have this uh, geometry to create some spit on the note because in our early testing, we found the problem where the note would pitch up every time we shot. Um, this, by inducing a tiny bit of spin by changing the friction on either side, we were able to get that note and we can shoot very straight now. Um, we power these flywheels at usually at 120 rotations per second using two crackings geared with a uh, step up by two. Um, going over, to our amp scoring system, uh, this pops out and we shoot it up against the back of the amp, bounces back onto this and into the amp, thanks to Jack and the Bot for inspiring that. Another thing that Jack and the Bot really inspired is from last season, they had a button that would put the robot into their shooter into coast mode. So when I press this button right here, the shooter goes into post mode for easy, easy setting of angle at the beginning of the match. Alrighty, so uh, here you can see the shooter running. This is its idling position. It traps the speaker when we go closer and farther away. Um, let's get up the podium shot. At the po when we get to the podium shot, the, you saw the shooter speed up to 120 rotations per second, uh, and then we shoot it out. Okay, back to storage uh, noted. Now for amp sequence, uh, we go up to 55 degrees with our amp bar goes out. Then we just shoot that um, into the amp uh, and into this robot. Uh, and then 
Uh, for closer shots, we go up the subwoofer, and that's only at 60 rotations per second. Uh, and that's uh, to, because we found in testing that notes bounce out at faster velocities closer. Um, handing it over to Jay for electrical. Yep. All right, take it away, Jay, on okay, electronics. Okay, so electrical's number one priority is obviously reliability. So a couple things that come with that, obviously cable management, um, we, do, we use these sheathing to keep our wires protected. Um, a new thing we're doing this year is with our CAN bus, instead of doing a device to device daisy chain CAN bus, we're doing a trunk and stub based CAN bus. So we have a continuous CAN bus. Um, so for example, across the shooter, and then we solder in stubs for each of our devices. So let's say this connector fails, the rest of the CAN bus still continues to work. Um, another thing that we're doing um, to improve reliability is since we have four Raspberry Pis, we wanted a compact and reliable power solution for them. So we made this pretty printed case for a Pololu voltage converter. So it makes it a really compact way to power the Raspberry Pi. Yeah, very cool. Now we're headed over to Luke to talk to round it out with their software systems. Okay, so there's a lot we can go with software. Um, I want to start with like one of the one of the things people will notice more during matches, which is our heavy emphasis on automation. We like to design our robot so our driver, Ian, has the least amount of buttons and things to do as possible. So we try to make it so our robot can manage and do most functions it needs to during a match by itself. So the way we do this is we have three sensors inside of our shooter. I think I believe Lodum talked about them. There's one in our intake, one inside of our, what we call the kicker motors, and then one right by the shooter. So those three sensors are always blocked by a note at some point, and we use that knowledge of which sensors are blocked to determine what's happening in a robot at any time, which allows us to automate the process of intaking, um, getting the note into the shooter, getting the shooter at the right angle, and being able to shoot. And we actually show all of that information. You might notice our LEDs changing on earlier tests. Our LEDs change as the states change, so our driver can always know what's going on in the robot and see when we have a note, because sometimes it's hard to tell from further away. So building on like the whole idea of automation, we have four cameras on our robot. Uh, there's one on each sort of module in each corner. These are all controlled by the Raspberry Pis Jay was talking about. Uh, we run a software, a software called Photon Vision on each Pi. That software allows us to use data drawn from the cameras as they see April tags on the field to know exactly where on the field we are at any time, be it during autonomous or during tele -op. And we use that information consistently to do a ton of automated tasks such as you know, time we can have very advanced paths using Path Planner to be, um, have like six or five note autos. Um, we also use them during matches to make it so when Ian, our driver, wants to aim at the speaker, the robot can know where it is in the field and do some like simple trigonometry to figure out what angle it actually needs to face at to always be facing the speaker so the, so the robot can score. It also uses the same mount logic to make sure the robot angles the right way. Um, one other thing we do that um, I actually was doing actively while testing for other uh, people while they were talking was we use a tool called Advantage Scope made by Mechanical Advantage. Um, this tool is very useful. So we as a team like to always know exactly what's happening on our robot at all times because we find it very important to be able to quickly figure out what's going wrong when something goes wrong and fix it quickly. So this tool Advantage Scope lets us log almost anything we want from either the robot standpoints, we log motor temperatures, velocities, voltages, or a code sample, we can like log states, uh, the values of variables, all that, all those kinds of things. So we can know what's happening in the software and the hardware all the time and figure out problems super easily. Uh, we also use scope in another way, which is to view log files and see what happened during matches, similar, a similar way to debug. And then the third way, and one of the most interesting and most useful for us is we can use scope to simulate our robot's code before we even have the robot. So we can actually write complicated software and test it on a non-existent robot in scope and see if that will work. So even though, even if we get the robot with very few, very little time left in the season for our first competition, we can have written and tested lots of code and be ready to uh, for a quick turnaround once we finally have the robot. All right, that's very interesting, Luke. Thank you so much for your time, Husky Robotics. I wish you the best going later into this competition. Thank you so much. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. 
Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.